What have we learned? What are we learning? How do we sort out the contradictions in our own thinking these days? We are confronted with an illusion, one that we have mentioned a number of times. It's a false premise of, I am the master of my own fate, I am the captain of my own soul, I can handle things myself. That attitude that is imparted to us as wisdom. It's instilled in us early on. It's how we're taught even as children to succeed. And then March happened. One of life's most difficult lessons for us human beings to learn is to look out on a landscape that we don't want, that we can't understand, and to learn to wait on God through dry and difficult times. It is truth-telling. It reveals a great deal about our faith when we are forced to wait to see the way through what it will be to hope. That in spite of our mindset that we can always take charge, that we find ourselves unable to affect the kind of outcome we would like, and in fact, we wonder what God is saying to us. Now, who would guess that the answers to the questions on our hearts, how long will this go on, God? What's going to happen? What should we do? Would come from perhaps a little known prophet, Habakkuk, one you might not likely remember. Christians have at least an indirect interest in Habakkuk through the Apostle Paul, who writes his letters to the Romans, the just, the righteous shall live by faith. Most of us have heard these words and associated them with Martin Luther, but they are actually taken from Habakkuk, whose importance is much greater than he knew and is limited neither to his time nor by the shortness of his prophecy. Now, what connection do you and I or us possibly have to Habakkuk? Perhaps a book you've never read or even heard a single sermon on. Habakkuk knows what it feels like when God is taking too long to answer or when God's answers don't seem to make any sense. In Habakkuk, we, have, we find not condemnation as we get from the other prophets, but a word of encouragement for all of us who have grown impatient on the promises of God. We find a word of hope for each of us even now as we struggle to make sense of dashed hopes, shattered dreams, uncertain futures, and unpredictability. Habakkuk is a praying prophet rather than a preaching prophet. There is a depth to his prophecy that reflects the nature of his writing as an extended conversation of speaking and listening to God. Our readings begin, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? This is a lament, a desperate cry for help in the midst of great trouble. Habakkuk's words are a complaint. He has major issues to take up with God. You know what? We suspect we do as well, if we're honest. Habakkuk was attentive to what was going on around him. Despite his prayers, he sees chaos, injustice, and wrongdoing everywhere. Nothing seems to be working, and the wrongdoers have gotten the upper hand. Apparently, Habakkuk had repeatedly called upon God to act, to intervene, to set things right, to just do something. Yet it seemed to him that God had not heard him, and God was not yet acting to save. Finally, out of a deep sense of frustration and confusion, he cries out to God, How long, O Lord, must I cry and call out for your help? But you do not listen. There may be nothing worse than speaking but not being heard than addressing another who doesn't listen or respond. This is no small thing for Habakkuk, a Jew whose faith and life is fully expressed in the Psalms, the prayer book of Israel. At the heart of the Psalms is the conviction that the God of Israel is known in prayer through speaking, listening, and answering. And Habakkuk was not praying like many of us pray today. He wasn't praying to be famous, or successful. He wasn't asking for a big house, an expensive car, or a higher paying job. 
In fact, Habakkuk doesn't even pray for himself. What he offers up to God are prayers on behalf of others, especially those who suffer much and those who suffer unjustly. If we're honest, we would acknowledge that we are one with Habakkuk. We know what unanswered prayer is like, even if we don't pray formally. Lord, please do this. Please act here. Please set this right. Please make this well. Please right this wrong. Please stop this evil. Please heal this damage. Please end this conflict. Please change this heart. Lord, please do something. Act like God. And so Habakkuk persists in prayer. And this is the turning point and the example and encouragement for us. Amazingly, he takes God at his word, saying he plans to position himself to be alert and on the lookout for God, what God will do and say next. Habakkuk trusts that God is already at work, even if he can't see it yet. He trusts that God has more to say, and he commits himself to waiting on God rather than taking measures into his own hands. Habakkuk assumes a disposition of waiting with confident trust in God. He waits. What is true in scripture is to wait is to be active, to be doing something, something very important. In fact, it's the most important thing we do since waiting is an expression of faith, of being open and receptive to God, to God's action, to God's voice, to God's will, to God's answer. To wait is to be patient rather than acting, to be receptive to the action of others. To wait and be patient is to trust that God is at work even if we can't see or understand what God is doing at any given moment in time. Living faith is an entrusting of ourselves into God's hands as God speaks and acts in all the circumstances of our lives since God is already busy at work. This is why the Lord tells Habakkuk, write down the vision of his purpose for the world since it awaits its appointed time and is yet to be completed. What is this vision? What does God give Habakkuk to put into writing and to hold until its appointed time? What does God say to him about his vision for the world, the truth that is coming, is going on, and what is truly worth waiting for and certainly will come? The Lord says, see, the righteous will live by this faith. This is not a program or a list of things to do, or a blueprint, or a recipe for success. So how do we wait? Faith is a willingness to trust God knows best and will bring our lives and the world to a good completion. This is God's vision for the world, what God has promised and what we by faith trust will surely come in God's good time and in God's good way. Martin Luther said, faith is, is living, daring confidence in God's grace. So sure and certain that the believer would stake his or her life on it. Moreover, faith is a divine work in us, which changes us and makes us to be born anew of God. What do you do when heaven seems silent? when you are no longer sure how or when or even if God is working in our lives. Our natural instinct is to just make something happen, anything happen. But God's word calls us to wait, to be still. Though we have no choice but to wait, we do have a choice in how we wait. Some people wait out a long season like this in rebellion. They go through life angry and disheartened and they make their displeasure known to anyone who will listen. Some wait out a difficult season in a spirit of resignation and life for them loses all purpose and perspective and they trudge listlessly down and down and become cynical. And we are tempted in these but there is a third way, God's way, that this message opens up to us. It is waiting with anticipation, the righteousness, meaning the right way to wait. They wait alert and 
charged with expectation. Their stand is one of tiptoe anticipation. They are waiting on the watchtower for the first sign of how God is coming, is answering, is making this right. God speaks of an appointed time when he will act, not uncertain or to be rushed, but a planned time at just the right time. We know. We've been reminded. When you can't see his hand, trust his heart. God promises to Habakkuk a vision. When we wait on God, that God has a promise that is not a lie on which you have to fix your heart, or it's not up to wishful or positive thinking. It is God's, God's self, who backs up God's word. And this God says, surely it will come to you. Your answer, your protection, your peace, your purpose. This waiting is where we so often meet each other in this life. Standing together on tiptoe, scanning the horizon, believing not if God will act or come or answer and save, but only when. We do it for and with each other. Because sometimes we get discouraged and we can't see any longer. And so we're there for each other, looking, believing. Prayer is practicing the vision of who we are. Habakkuk calls us and leads us to wait in joy. Happiness is not joy. Happiness depends on what is happening. Happiness comes from the outside, what's happening around us and to us. And if you long for happiness, you set yourself up to be the victim of circumstances then. Joy in this world is always in spite of something. Joy is a defiant, nevertheless, even though. Look and wait and be astonished, be astounded, Scripture says. A vision of God of all of his glory and, and power. God's brightness is like lightning flashing from his hand. The earth shakes, the mountains tremble. God is coming to make things right. And having seen that vision, being reminded of who God is and how sure his promises are, Habakkuk can wait, wait with joy, wait in the even though. Listen, we have stood in Habakkuk's place. I have. And so have you. And we stand there together today, this morning. We'll climb to the lookout tower and scan the horizon and we'll wait to see what God says. And then we'll write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. If it seems slow, wait for it. It's on its way and it will be right on time. Look at this image from scripture through the words of the message. Though the cherry trees don't blossom, and the strawberries don't ripen, though the apples are worm-eaten, and the wheat fields stunted through the sheep pens are sheep-less, and the cattle barns empty, where we stand, this is where we stand, isn't it? When the world has been turned upside down, when nothing is as we expected, or has, as it's been before, we are counting on God's rule to prevail. We'll take heart and draw strength. As people, we are shaped to wait, feet shaped to stand in those hard, narrow spaces. We're built for strength and endurance. There's a beautiful little image at the end of the passage in Habakkuk of a deer, its hooves, its whole self shaped to stand in small circumstances, narrow spots where things around it are rocky and steep. God shaped it that way for the places the deer was going to be. And as people of faith, we are built also to stand in those narrow places, rocky, seemingly extreme spots as well. We become together, you and I, a portrait of waiting for God in joy in the even though, in the nevertheless. And we will remind ourselves of all God is doing now and has already done. Each day, we'll scan the horizon confident that we will see the first glimpse of how God will act, and we'll point it out to each other as we see it. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.